At the top of Cold Springs Summit, nearly 7,000 feet above sea level, Lucille rancher Marty Gill gets a charge out of the big view. From standing right here, you can see parts of four states and some huge country. It's an awe-inspiring spot on this high divide between Hell's Canyon and the Salmon River, north of Riggins, where generations of the Gill family have raised cattle for more than 100 years. The Gill family has deep roots. They are the longest continuous white residents of Idaho County, going back to the 1870s. Here in a place that feels like the top of the world, Marty Gill is standing on the pinnacle of Idaho's livestock industry as the board president of the Idaho Cattle Association. It's, it's been a heck of a ride. Um, we had a record mid-year meeting this year in Lewiston. We had a great uh, trail ride again with uh, Governor Little. We had, uh, you know, Vicki Christensen, the, the chief of the U.S. Forest Service on site in Hawaii County for a day and a half, which is really cool. So Idaho's getting a lot of input on a national level. I think there's some things, you know, moving in the right direction for, for long-term resource management for everybody. The, you know, the lock it up, leave it alone, let it burn down model that's happened kind of the last 20 years, I don't think it's a long-term sustainable deal. Since the 1940s, the Gill Ranch has operated on a big patch of private land above the Salmon River in Lucille and on a large grazing allotment that runs over the mountain into the Hell's Canyon National Recreation Area. This is mighty steep country. The Gills joke that their cattle are equipped with special built-in low-range four-wheel drive or they'd fall off the mountain. We've lost a couple different bulls throughout a few years down the river here that you look at the pasture, yeah, I can see why. <laughs> the Gill family is well known locally because of their deep roots. If you visit the Kirkwood Museum in Hell's Canyon, you'll learn about early Idaho County settlers. The late governor, Len B. Jordan, and his wife Grace ran a sheep ranch at Kirkwood Creek for a decade. Melvin Gill, now 80 years old, worked for Bud Wilson at the Kirkwood Sheep Ranch from the mid-1940s to 1975, when Hell's Canyon National Recreation Area was created by Congress. A longtime rodeo rider, Melvin Gill was the Grand Marshal of Grangeville Border Days in 2017 and Grand Marshal of the Riggins Rodeo in 2007. He worked on the ranch his whole life. I had no time to play. Ever since I was eight years old, I took a man's place in the hayfield and driving teams because we hayed with horses. And I used to think my parents was the meanest people you ever saw because the kids I went to school with would be down swimming or running around or playing or doing something and I'd be up here on a field on a hot day behind a team. Marty Gill and his sister Shelley are the fourth generation of the family to run the ranch. Shelley and her husband Garrett raise about 500 cattle at the Gill Ranch in Lucille. Marty works as a nutrition expert for Agribeef Performix Nutrition in Fruitland while running a second ranch in Parma for the family. In fact, if you shop for a steak at Albertsons, the Gill family's cattle is marketed as part of the Double R brand. You might see a family photo in the grocery store. Most times our cattle will grade 85 plus percent, 85, 88 percent choice. So that's, that's the target market in trying to sell good product because you get paid a premium for that. Marty Gill is a man on the move. He works a four state territory for Performix Nutrition, helping cattle ranchers increase protein and minerals for their livestock. He'll take samples of their pasture grass and hay and provide an analysis. We'll take what you have in your feeds, what type of animal or what type of production you're getting. We'll look at the research and the proven data out there that shows how much protein or copper or zinc or something like that that they need. And then we'll take what you got versus what's optimal for the animal. And this is just like a great big kitchen. Then we put the stuff together to make up the difference in a supplement. Marty Gill applies his knowledge about cattle feed and nutrition to the family's cattle operation as well. Today, he's providing nutritional supplements for some replacement heifers at the Parma Ranch. These cows will be raising calves for the first time next year. 
At the Parma Ranch, Gill breeds ideal characteristics into their cattle through artificial insemination and heterosis, crossing Hereford mother cows with purebred Angus bulls and Angus mother cows with purebred Hereford bulls. Those of us in the commercial industry are trying to raise the most efficient animal that we can. Cattle can take a lot of that dry, rough, fibrous feed that humans can't digest and turn it into delicious protein that's full of um, zinc, iron, B vitamins um, that humans can use. And so you look at traits like, of course, growth rates, pregnancy percentage, fertility. The gills also select characteristics in the breeding process to produce a slightly smaller animal that can handle the steep-faced mountain country next to the Salmon River and Hell's Canyon. In our steep, rugged country, you don't want a bunch of 16, 1800 pound cows. They just can't survive in that country as well as a 11, 12, 1300 pound cow. So it's a lot about your environment. While many Idaho ranchers sell their calves in the fall to the beef market, the gills hang on to their cattle until they grow into yearlings, while feeding them a mix of hay, grain, and minerals until harvest time. This group on average today is weighing about uh, 850, 870 pounds, so we'll be looking to market them probably within the next couple of weeks to a feedlot. They'll put them on feed for about uh, 120 to 140 days, and so these cattle would be harvested uh, probably in January or something to go into the uh, beef chain, um, weighing about 1,300 pounds, and, and again, hopefully uh, close to 90% on them will grade choice and produce some really good steaks. Melvin Gill used to love herding cattle on horseback as a kid on the family ranch. I loved horses, cows, and dogs. That was my highlight. I loved that. Okay. It was just something to it that I enjoyed. Melvin Gill used to ride horseback to the Cow Creek School. He learned how to break horses and shoe horses from his dad. Melvin and his wife Midge had two children, Shelley and Marty. His daughter loved to ride horses and always wanted to tag along with her dad. She always had her horse ride, and when she was a little bitty girl, why she, it didn't matter if it was storming or cold or what it was, she had to go with me all the time. I tried my hardest to be as good as I could be so that I could get to go. And so it doesn't surprise me when she got out of college and said she was coming back to help me. I'm sure glad she's here too. <laughs> At the Gill Ranch Cow Camp, Shelly talks about running the ranch. It's a huge allotment. There's almost 30,000 acres, a, a lot to cover. Um, we've had a lot of forest fires that make the trees and trails you know, hard to get around. A lot of changes. There's not the logging. We've got a lot more hunters, recreationists to deal with. We've got wolves to deal with. A lot of different dynamics have changed over the years. In general, the Gills cattle herd follows the green up the Salmon River side of the mountain and spends six months on the forest allotment from June through November. Just follow the grass. That's why most of these old ranches had a low country and a high country. With hunting season coming up, Neil braces for the impact. Since the wolves have really hit like the Lockstock Clearwater area, we seem to get a lot more hunters down here. Frequently, hunters don't respect the difference between private and public lands, she said. What we find it is they cut the deeded property fence if the gate's locked and just go through. Antlers that they see just over the fence that you don't respect the private ground. The Forest Service doesn't do much maintenance on their lands, Neil says, which hurt their ability to manage cattle. They don't do the trail work. They don't, well, we looked at the signs out there, you know, just the recreation signs. There's no road signage. They're just, yeah, there's I don't know, just a lot of neglect. You know, trees are dying, weeds are coming. Weeds have been a big thing. We've got them on the ranch too, but they used to kind of try to hold them down on National Forest and especially on this Hell's Canyon recreation side. It's just gotten out of hand. Forest Service officials provided a written response. The Salmon River Ranger District partners with Idaho County and the Nez Perce Tribe to treat weed-affected areas across the district on an annual basis. 
Recreation trail maintenance on the Salmon River Ranger District is limited due to budget constraints. Forest Service grazing permittees are partners in ensuring the health and sustainability of Forest Service rangelands. Despite all the challenges associated with managing the ranch, Neil enjoys it. I just think it's a great lifestyle. I like the independence of getting up in the morning early when you want, doing what you want for the day, no bosses. We work very hard, always have, and that's the way I like it. Melvin and Midge mainly hang out at their lovely home overlooking the Salmon River country, enjoying retirement. And Marty is sprinting to the finish of his service as ICA board president, pushing the issues of the day. Marty notes that Idaho ranchers have strong political support, with five former ICA presidents serving in the Idaho legislature and Emmett rancher Brad Little serving as governor. As ICA president, Marty worked to expand the network with ranching leaders in the West. I wanted to pull everybody, you know, more together and make sure we're kind of on the same page. We're all talking about the same issues, whether it's whether it's this climate or whether it's the Bitterroot Range in Montana or the, you know, the Steens Mountain in Oregon or the Black Rock Desert in Nevada. They're all a little different, but we're talking about management, grazing, water, you know, human animal, human wildlife interaction. You know, let's bring the best science and the best methods to the table that, that works for society. And I think there's something to be learned by, you know, looking at the big picture view and trying to bring some of those things together.